Hey there, and welcome back to XCOM. My name is Pete, and today we finally complete another episode of our Legend Iron Man walkthrough of XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. Things haven't really been great lately, I talked a bit about that in the last channel update video, but I am feeling better now, and I was really itching to continue our playthrough, so that is what we will do here today. To bring you back up to speed, last time we left off after completing the Lost and Abandoned mission, during which we met the Reapers and the Skirmishers, as well as the Assassin, a particularly nasty alien enemy, although one we were thankfully able to drive off with a few explosives. The Assassin is far from dead yet, however, and unfortunately she is not alone either, and we'll see a bit more of her and her companions in this cutscene that is now immediately triggered as we click on the bridge. We've just made contact with a new faction of the Resistance, known as the Reapers. They're an elusive bunch, but this is their headquarters. We can scan at this location now to start benefiting from our newfound cooperation. So this is the Commander. Dragonova spoke highly of you and the rest of your team. Trust me, that does not happen often. You are all welcome here. I will admit I had some concerns with this alliance of yours, but from what I hear, this skirmisher, Mox, was captured protecting one of my own. Reapers have long memories, Commander. We will honor our end of the deal. Volk, out. 
All right, quite a bit to unpack here, starting with the three chosen. And now we also know why the expansion is called War of the Chosen. Having made contact with the Reapers, we now also have access to faction orders and covert actions. We'll go a bit more into detail about those soon. For now, in short, faction orders are basically passive bonuses that can boost various things like research speed or income, while covert actions allow us to not only increase our influence with a particular resistance faction, but also to obtain special rewards. You can see it here, one of the covert actions would have us try to rescue Praetor Mox. Undoing, Commander. If you would seek a fight with me, I hope you are truly ready to match my skills. And yes, another reminder that we have revealed the first of the three chosen, the Assassin. While all we know about the other two is that they exist, officially our XCOM team has not yet met them. For the Assassin, we now also learn that she controls this area here in what is roughly Northeast Asia. So should we ever embark on a mission in that region, she might show up to attack us yet again. Fairly close by, we also have the Reaper headquarters, where we could now fly to to scan, just like we do for supplies or rookies, only that this location gives us intel. Intel will be needed soon, but can also be obtained from missions and for the moment we have enough, so we don't really need to do that. At the top of the screen, we can also bring up an overview of the three chosen, so let's quickly take a look at that as well. We'll need to pay close attention to these chosen, Commander. They each seem to have unique advantages in combat that we should avoid. All right, it might look a bit intimidating, but it's not much that we don't already know. We can once again see the assassin's strengths and weaknesses here, as well as some stats and two progress bars for knowledge and hunt. The higher the knowledge bar, the more the Chosen will escalate their efforts to stop us, while the hunt marks our progress in learning more about them and getting closer to taking them out. For now, nothing that we need to concern ourselves too much with at this point. Instead, we want to briefly look at West Asia here, where we have a mission waiting for us. However, in order to complete it, we first need to make contact with the local resistance, and to do that, we need to finish researching resistance communications. Avenger plotting new course. In other words, for now, we need to sit tight and wait, and while we do that, let's scan for supplies. Another important step forward in our research. And there we are, resistance communications are completed, probably the most important research project in the early game, but of course we want to assign another one immediately. Commander, if we intend on discovering the purpose of the chip we extracted from you, we'll need to conduct the appropriate research as soon as possible. Now, as you can see, we can now build the resistance comms facility, we can also research resistance radio, and probably the most important one, we can now make contact with resistance cells all across the globe. By the way, the resistance comms facility here is not to be confused with the resistance ring, which we can already build after completing last episode's lost and abandoned mission. Command. The science team has grown particularly interested in this field of research. So much so, that their inspiration could lead to vast improvements in our research efficiency. However, we must act fast. Despite their brilliance, they are a fickle group. We are now also introduced to research inspirations after we've learned about breakthroughs in episode 2, and inspirations allow us to complete research projects much quicker than usual. Exactly how much quicker is determined randomly. I think the original idea was to cut the time in half, but that is not the case. In most instances, it just reduces the time by a few days. For hybrid materials here, the time is reduced by two days down to two. The original time would have been four days. And it is a project that will need to be researched in the early game at some point if we ever want to upgrade our armors. So let's take advantage of this time reduction and get hybrid materials underway. I will send word as soon as we have something of note. In two days time then, we will however finally continue with Alien Biotech. You can see though that it is easy to get sidetracked with breakthroughs and inspirations, so we don't want to lose sight of our overall game plan. Commander, we can now work to establish contact with local resistance groups operating out of regions around the globe. Once we've collected sufficient intel to make contact, we'll need to scan the target region for the operative signal. All right, now that we have researched resistance communications, we can finally make contact with all of the small resistance cells across the globe. 
Our XCOM initiative is operating out of West Africa, but others are fighting the alien invaders in other regions as well, and obviously we want to unite these individual resistance cells. For now, we can make contact with three of them, those that have a link to West Africa, and from there we can then establish links to more and more resistance cells until we hopefully spread our influence across the entire globe. This is important because, as you saw earlier, missions like the one in West Asia cannot be completed until we have made contact with the local resistance, and as you can see, to do that, we would need to make contact with Western Europe, then with Eastern Europe, and then with West Asia. Making contact is also what we need intel for, but supplies are important as well, so let's keep scanning here for four more days and then we make contact with Western Europe. We are also immediately notified of the fact that our engineer Dr. M. Dendra has made progress clearing some alien debris, so we now have another building spot at our disposal and we definitely want to use it. Commander. Now that members of the Resistance factions have joined us on the Avenger, I thought you might want an area where you can meet, to organize and plan future operations together. Lily Shen now informs us of the Resistance Ring, the facility that we need to build if we want to take full advantage of faction orders and covert actions. It has been available for construction since the completion of the Lost and Abandoned mission and it is a very important facility to build in the early game, so we want to begin construction immediately. Thankfully, we still have enough supplies and also some spare power, although it will take 24 days until the facility is completed. Now, what we could do, and the game also suggests it here, is to assign Mr. Dendro to this construction project to cut the building time in half. However, this won't be the only facility we need to build, and so I feel like his services are much better used in the continued excavation of alien debris on the Avenger, so that is what we'll have him do instead for the next 10 days, and with that, we can now keep scanning for those supplies. Our inspiration did prove beneficial. Shortly after, hybrid materials are then completed in the research labs, and that means we can now start researching some new armor technologies, and we can also produce the nanoscale vest, very similar to the nanofiber vest from Enemy Unknown, as it is a piece of equipment that gives our soldiers one extra hit point. This early in the campaign, that one extra hit point can be the difference between life and death, but our financial situation sadly does not allow us to equip everyone with the vest right away, not to mention that we would also need to sacrifice an equipment slot for it. So no immediate purchases right at this moment, instead let's finally keep going with alien biotech. I agree, that is an important task, Commander. Four more days until that's done, and in three days we will also receive our first supply drop, until then, let's keep scanning. Nothing on the local comms. Advent's been quiet lately. I'm guessing we have you to thank for that. Our pleasure, Den Mother. Enjoy it while it lasts. We plan to. Our water purification... Massive signal coming. coming from the Advent Network Tower. It's global. Sir, I think you want to see this. Fellow citizens. For 20 years, the Advent Coalition has worked tirelessly to repair the ravages and injustices of the old world. Under our stewardship, our cities prosper, our people flourish, and our world heals. And yet, among us, there are still those who would refuse to acknowledge the truth, who are determined to see all that we have achieved Multiple crumble. radar contacts on approach to Haven Alpha 7. That must end. Even as I speak to you today... You've got incoming on approach! Your signal's breaking up. ...outlying territories to end this scourge once and for all. They're right on top of you! Losing you, Avenger. Raise them again! We will ensure your continued safety and well-being throughout this crisis. <laughs> With your cooperation, we will overcome these radical elements and usher in another 20 years of peace and prosperity. They don't stand a chance. Commander, we should get a squad ready to deploy.
Commander. We have a squad ready to move on the Resistance Haven currently under siege by the aliens. Give the word and we'll move out. Alright, looks like we have our next mission waiting for us and this is going to be a tough one. These Advent Retaliation missions are XCOM 2's equivalent to the Terra missions from the first game and they are most definitely just as difficult, especially this early in the playthrough. I believe this first retaliation mission is guaranteed to pop up during the first month and well, apart from having just started the game, we are currently not too well equipped for it, as you will see in just a moment. Setting course for the West African sector. Now, this here is going to be our squad today, Reaper Dragonova, Ranger Helleboris and yes, two specialists, Inch Wominian and Van Dyke. Retaliation missions are not really the place to train rookies, although this composition is far from ideal either, as I would have preferred to bring along at least one grenadier, maybe even two. Unfortunately though, both of our grenadiers are tired, and taking a tired soldier on a mission is extremely risky, as they have a high chance to panic even at the slightest issue, such as someone simply taking damage. And because I can simply not promise that things will go smoothly here, we are left with no other choice but to bring two specialists along. Even a second ranger would have been nice, but Starfall Antec is injured, so this right here is really the only squad we can field at the moment, and I hope it will be enough. Since retaliation missions are all about doing as much damage as quickly as possible, everyone has a frag grenade and we will now also put that advanced autoloader from the first mission on our Reaper, that way she can reload twice without having to use an action and her weapon only carries 3 rounds so that should come in handy and also unlocks another achievement. Other than that, we can't really do much else to prepare, so let's cross our fingers that this somewhat less than ideal group of soldiers can get the job done. Deployed. In position for deployment. We just got word the aliens are attacking a resistance outpost in this region. They're not taking any prisoners. These people need our help. And we're heading in to make sure the aliens regret coming after the resistance. Neutralize all hostile contacts in the area and secure the camp. Menace 1-5, hostile forces are attacking the outpost. Eliminate all enemy units and protect those civilians. Advent came in hot and so did we. You won't have a concealed position for deployment on this one. Well, that is not quite correct. As you can see, our Reaper does have concealment and that is likely going to be a huge help on the first few turns. Now, in the top left corner we can see the civilian counter, 13 of them are present on the map and we need to rescue at least 6, while the aliens will pretty quickly start reducing that number. If we happen to rescue more than that, that's fine, but it won't affect the mission rating like in the first game, so the main goal here is to get to 6 and to take out all enemies on the map, ideally as quickly as possible. And so, let's see if we can find some of those enemies by scouting ahead with Dragonova here. Volk says I am to obey. Right, nothing yet on this side of the map, looks like the main area is a bit further over to the left, where we can actually already see the blue outline of a hunkered down civilian in the building, so let's get over there. I will go. And indeed, that looks a bit more promising, no enemies in sight, but definitely a few civilians down below. For now, let's stay on the high ground here and bring everyone else up with dashes, and then we'll see if any hostiles show themselves. Savor the moment. Okay, so this mission has just become a lot more complicated as the second Chosen has decided to interfere. Like I said, the first retaliation mission is already difficult enough on its own. This, however, takes things to an entirely new level. Now, the hunter here, of course, has some strengths and weaknesses, just like the assassin, and it's definitely good that we did not take any of our tired soldiers with us, as any attack from the hunter decreases our soldiers' will, which is what causes them to become tired if it gets too low. 
the hunter also regenerates health at a rate of 3 hit points per turn, even though that is not stated here, but we can do some extra damage of our own by getting close to them for our attacks, as the brittle weakness gives us a 50% damage bonus for all attacks within 4 tiles. The fact that they also take extra damage from skirmishes is sadly not really helpful for us at the moment, but it might come in handy in the future. For now though, this presents a substantial challenge and makes an already tricky mission even more dangerous. Let's see if we can find a way to handle this. It's looking like your last. It's one of the chosen. This mission just got a little more dangerous. Stay on top of its position and try to take it out. It would seem Advent has begun deploying their so-called priests into combat. Their implants provide significant enhancements to whatever latent psionic energy they may have once possessed. I relish these quiet moments before the strike. Alright, so the hunter is moving up somewhere in the shadows and will likely strike sooner rather than later. In the meantime, we have found our first pair of enemies and they have spotted us as well. One of them is a regular advent trooper, the other an advent priest, an enemy focused largely on psionic attacks. They do have a weapon of course, but they don't really use it unless they can get a flanking shot, which makes them a similar case to the sectoids in that they are not a priority target, simply because their likelihood of actually doing permanent damage is much smaller than that of the trooper. So that trooper is now our first target, let's move up Dragonova into a flanking position. They have a patrol moving here. Now, unfortunately, this also reveals another group of enemies, but we have a 50% chance of remaining hidden and not triggering them, and on a mission like this, I am afraid those are the odds that we simply have to live with. Tell your god I'm coming. All right, so far so good, the critical hit gives us the kill, our reaper remains hidden and also receives a promotion, and we now also have a rough idea of the second group of enemies. For the time being, however, let's stay focused on the priest and move Schwaminian into a flanking position next. Lovely, that's another crit, and with only three hit points left, we should now be able to take them out if Helleborus can land his melee attack. Okay, so let me introduce you to the priest's special ability, Sustain. This ability has a 20% chance of triggering in case of an attack that would kill the priest, and instead places them into a stasis with one hit point remaining. And that stasis is the big issue here, as the priest is now completely immune to damage until the start of their turn. That means, even if we move up with Van Dijk here, we cannot take a shot at the priest, and throwing a grenade also won't affect them, so the only thing we can sensibly do is to put our specialist on overwatch. Me, do I have to do everything myself? Right, of course the overwatch misses, but at least the priest did not take the flanking shot against Helleborus. Instead, our ranger is now the target of a stasis attack himself. Not far enough. I'm watching you. Menace 1 5, the chosen hunter is targeting your position from long range. You need to get out of his line of sight before it's too late. Okay, so the hunter has decided to use their tracking shot ability, marking Van the Dam Dyke as the target. This tracking shot can be initiated from pretty much anywhere on the map, and if we don't move Van Dyke out of the pretty large cone of fire, the hunter will take the shot at the beginning of their next turn as a free action with a very high chance to hit. The cone of fire is marked by those red tiles on the ground here, and of course we want to move Van Dyke out of there. Thankfully the tracking shot only applies to him, so having someone else inside of the cone of fire is perfectly fine. To get us started though, let's rescue the first two civilians with Dragonova. You need to run. And conveniently enough, this also puts her in a flanking position against the priest, albeit with a high chance to reveal herself after the shot. My 
sights are off. I have almost no ammo. Okay, so luckily we stay hidden, but missing an 89% is far from ideal, so this is definitely not the best start to the mission. Still, the priest will go down this turn, but first let's grab another civilian and get Van Dyke out of danger. Finally then, Schwaminian can move up and throw his grenade to guarantee the kill. Helleborus is in stasis and can therefore not do anything this turn. Grenade! I would have gotten rid of those guys first too. Okay, no further concerning developments just yet, that second group of hostiles remains hidden for now and the hunter also does not show themselves, which means we have a great opportunity here to keep scouting ahead with our still cloaked Reaper Dragonova. That reveals a few more civilians, but otherwise the coast is clear, so let's move up the rest of the squad as well. To end our turn we then move up with Elena once more, but that still doesn't reveal anything new. Yes, the hunter's action economy is quite generous, as they grapple into position, summon an advent soldier, keep moving and also take a shot against us here. It's nothing personal. Wer angegriffen? That was the least likely outcome. I'm not sure what the elders expect me to do with a planet full of their pet projects. I'm not looking to run a zoo. Luckily it misses, but the hunter is onto us now and that means it is time to act and to take them out. Still, we don't want to lose sight of that other group of hostiles and whoever else might be still roaming around, although so far they have thankfully not yet started killing off civilians. Now with the summoned advent trooper in an easily flankable position that's going to be our next target, simply because we would need to focus all of our firepower on the hunter to take them out quickly and that might leave us vulnerable to the trooper. Unfortunately though, Schwaminian does not get the job done here, so maybe Dragonova can land the kill shot this time after rescuing another civilian. Go on, run! Volk says hello. I almost feel bad for them. They've got no idea what they're in for. Okay, Reaper revealed, but at least the trooper is dead. The hunter, meanwhile, will only suffer a tiny bit of damage this turn, as we use Helleborus's grenade here to shred their armor for an easier time on the next turn. This also removes their cover, probably forcing the hunter to move, and with Van Dyke moving out of their line of sight, Helleborus is now the prime target, so let's put an 8 protocol on him, giving him an extra plus 20 to his defense. On the hunter's turn then we see another grapple putting them behind our squad, but that is hard to avoid with this much mobility per turn. Let's try something else. Thankfully they then move back down to us and also use one of their non-damaging abilities. Not exactly subtle. Mehr hast du nicht drauf? Soldier down. Get him back up ASAP. Okay, so the concussion grenade has knocked Schwaminian into a daze, but luckily Van Dyke shook off the effect, so we have a full turn to act with him. 
That is crucial, as we will need his grenade, but first let's use a free reload with Dragonova, cover me, I'm reloading. then get her into full cover, and then deploy her Claymore explosive right next to the hunter. Placing explosive. She is out of actions now to activate it, but we have a plan for that. First of all though, let's shake Schwaminian out of his daze. Das könnte etwas wehtun. I was hoping you'd make some effort to get your people back, Commander. This does not cost an action, so Van Dyke can now move into cover and use his grenade, which will blow up the Claymore just as well. Werfe Granate! With the hunter's armor already removed, this now deals a combined 8 points of damage, and now it is time to see how well that brittle weakness works for us, as we move Helleborus into a flanking position that is right within those 4 tiles of the hunter. The hit is guaranteed, and instead of a minimum 4 points of damage, he can now do 6 to 9, not factored in is the 50% chance to land a critical. And a critical hit it is for 10 points of damage. I can't let that slide. Now, 7 hit points remain and the Hunter will regenerate 3 at the start of the next turn, so one might be inclined to take this shot here with Shuminian, but he only has one action left after being dazed, so that would leave him very exposed and the kill is definitely not guaranteed, so getting into cover seems more sensible to me. Roger that. And here we now also see that second alien pod, who have now begun killing off the poor civilians. It's getting a little ugly around here. Time to move. Right on. You should have pulled your people out when you had the chance. Okay, so to be honest, this had to happen at some point. Helleborus suffers 2 points of damage from the shots and a further 2 at the start of our turn from bleeding damage caused by the hunter's rifle. In other words, at the beginning of the next turn, Helleborus will start bleeding out and at that point we only have a limited time window to save him, because no, we did not bring any medkits along. Still, he is our best chance at finishing off the hunter for now, so let's do the following. We will now place an evac zone right next to our adversary, and then we'll have Helleborus move up there. Bestätigt. From here, he now once again has a guaranteed hit. Let's see what he can do. Feind vernichtet. And there we are, and I think I know who our mission MVP is likely going to be. Not bad, Commander. It's time for a tactical retreat. But we'll see each other again real soon. Excellent work, Commander. We may not have put them down for good, but at the very least we've held off the Chosen for another day. So, the Hunter has been defeated, at least for this mission, Helleborus has received a promotion and XCOM has received 5 ability points. Unfortunately, this now ends Helleborus' stint on this mission, as we will now use a free action to evacuate him out of here to make sure that he survives. That also means that for the next, and from what it looks like, perhaps last enemy group, we are down to only 3 soldiers, so this could get interesting. For that reason, I think it makes a lot of sense to recloak Dragonova now, I am the hunter. which now also allows us to safely dash up to the loot from the fallen Advent Soldier. I can get there. We recover a hair trigger, not really the most useful weapon upgrade, but we will of course take what we can get at this point. And with another enemy pod wandering around, let's play things safe for now by rescuing another civilian here. Get out of here. I don't think we'll have any trouble getting to 6, since each enemy group will only ever kill one civilian per turn. about some kind of shapeshifters. 
I'm guessing this is it. It is a remarkable species. If only we had some means of containment. Don't even think about it. Now, another civilian is dead and we have encountered an enemy that was already foreshadowed in the cutscene leading up to the mission. This shape-shifting behemoth comes with a health pool of 12 hit points, but it is also a pure melee enemy, albeit one with a slightly higher movement range than our soldiers. It is also standing right next to an explosive canister, which we are guaranteed to hit for a guaranteed 6 points of damage. Alright, lovely, and since we have enough distance between our two specialists and the enemy, we can quickly reload and take aim with Schwaminian as well. Okay, it looks like things might slowly be turning around for us as Mr. Angmar gets maximum damage, but we won't take any chances with Eleanor as revealing her might trigger the next part, so instead let's just grab civilian number 6 and complete our first objective. That is confirmed. We've secured a civilian contact. Afterwards, we can then simply move back up and end our turn. I go where I'm needed. It's turning into a massacre out there, Commander. That camp is getting wiped out. Alright, another dead civilian, and you can also see that our latest foe has health regeneration abilities, so we're back up to 3 hit points, still a single hit will take care of things. Target disabled. And there we go, Schwaminian lands the killing blow, and I am becoming increasingly sure of the fact that we have just this one more group of enemies left, so let's rescue a few more civilians here. You don't belong here. You also may have noticed that each time we rescue one, it says region income increased, as we actually get three extra credits in West Africa for every civilian saved. Acknowledge. Multiple civilian contacts have been secured. Compared to the base income of 150 credits, that is obviously nothing too crazy, but it adds up, and again, we want to take what we can get. After another alien turn then, we have a good idea of where our enemies are, so let's get visual confirmation. I am at your service. Alright, excellent position, everyone is flanked, but our two specialists are just a little too far away for the ambush, so let's bring them up and get ready to strike. With our Reaper meanwhile, we are already going for the shot here, chances are good that we can get a kill or at least stay hidden. Okay, no kill, but at least she is still cloaked, while our enemies are now very much aware of our presence, albeit not of our exact location. This also results in them not going after the last remaining civilian, and well, now you can also see why a grenadier or just one more regular grenade would be very very useful, sadly though we don't have any left. So let's use our Reaper to strike again, this time against the Sectoid, which might be a bit more dangerous in this situation, since a panic or a mind control could be problematic now that we are down to only three soldiers, not to mention that it has already raised a zombie. I'll need more ammo soon. Alright, critical hit and we're revealed, but at this point that's okay. Let us now move in with Van Dyke to try and get the kill. Find neutralisiert. Brauche Munition. Awesome, that also gets rid of the zombie and we are left with only two more troopers. Let's bring Schwaminian into a flanking position next and go for another takedown. Training ammo fast. Ah! 
Okay, so the last trooper prioritizes taking out the civilian instead of us. That is something we'll gladly accept. And since they have moved up onto the rooftop, I would say that the best way to deal with them is to lay an overwatch trap. After all, now that no more civilians remain, they will have to come after us. Overwatch! Waffe geladen! Bitte Feuerschutz! Watching comes naturally. Okay, so it took us all three shots, but the trooper goes down. Still, as you can see, we are not done with the mission just yet. A good indicator of what we have left is that noise that we just heard, because somewhere in the corner here we have another one of those shape-shifting aliens, which are actually called the Faceless. However, as a melee enemy, and the last one standing at that, another round of overwatches should swiftly decimate their health pool. Ready to engage! Okay, so just one hit, that's a bit of a shame, because it means that whether or not we can go for the kill on this turn all hangs on whether or not Schwaminian can land this shot here, of course from a safe distance. And he can, which means we can now take a guaranteed hit with Dragon Nova next. I need more ammunition. That does not finish the job though, so let's move up Van Dyke onto the first floor for another 100 percent. Right, finished it! one five, status confirmed. We're not picking up any additional contacts. The AO is clear. Status confirmed. Mission accomplished. Great job, Commander. We sent the Chosen back to their masters with a few scars to show for their effort. If they decide to face us again, we'll be ready. And there we are, a pretty rough mission finally comes to an end. We survived our first proper encounter with the Chosen Hunter, albeit not without some trouble. With Helleborus injured, the mission rating is then only excellent instead of flawless, but we did rescue 8 civilians, two more than needed. For the mission photo, let's go with this one, and then head back to the Avenger. Propaganda never looked so pretty. Again, XCOM stands against progress. Again, they assault our peacekeeping forces in the outer territories. And again, they would see the chaos and brutality of their decayed world thrust upon us. But we must remain steadfast. We must remain absolute in our purpose, for we are Advent. At least we know these Chosen can be killed. Well, temporarily. Alright, so the sad news first. Both of our rangers are now out with injuries, and Helleborus is sidelined for an entire month. Definitely not a great start to the series, but it is legend difficulty, and with the Hunter's early appearance, the game really threw us a curveball. Be that as it may, we have some promotions to take care of, starting with Van the Dam Dyke. At the corporal rank of specialist, we can now choose between medical and combat protocol, with the first one allowing his gremlin drone to heal others, even without a medkit, while combat protocol turns it into an attack drone capable of dealing guaranteed damage to a target that even bypasses armor. And well, to me, Van Dyke looks like the kind of guy who's a bit more concerned with hurting people, so let's give him combat protocol. That leaves medical protocol for Schwaminian, so that we have both available to us, as they are both pretty useful abilities if used in the right situations. 
We move on to our injured ranger, and because Starfall Antec already received Blade Master at the end of the last episode, I think we will go with the more stealth-focused Phantom for Helleborus. In any case, it will be some time before he can use it. And that brings us to our Reaper, who handles promotions a little bit differently. The Resistance factions take a more flexible approach to training than traditional soldiers. They can often learn multiple new abilities with each promotion. They will adapt to follow your choices, Commander. Now, instead of just picking one of two abilities, soldiers from the Resistance factions can select multiple skills per rank. In addition, some ranks give them two, others three, and some even four abilities, although all of those, of course, come with a price tag in the form of ability points. Of course, we still need the actual rank to access the new stuff, but to unlock the ability, we need to spend some of those points. To make matters even more complicated, ability points are divided into Soldier AP and XCOM AP. Soldier AP are Dragonova's individual action points, earned simply for leveling up, while XCOM AP are a shared pool that earns action points for things like flagging shots, ambush kills, or as we just saw, defeating a Chosen. I think we'll talk a bit more about AP very soon. For now, let's make a choice between Remote Start and Blood Trail. Both abilities are somewhat situational, with Blood Trail coming into play much more often, but also with the much weaker effect, while Remote Start, on the other hand, is extremely powerful when it triggers, although environmental explosives are not always available, and enemies also not always choose them for cover when they're there. Still, I personally prefer it over Blood Trail, and ultimately we can choose both if we want to, so let's go with Remote Start first. Our loot overview then doesn't show anything surprising. The civilians are once again listed here, as are the numerous alien corpses that we have produced. You have done an outstanding job leading the Resistance, Commander. And here you can now see it. After rescuing eight civilians, region income in West Africa has increased by 24 credits, or three credits per civilian. And that concludes the mission debrief, and I think it also marks a good point to make the cut for today. In terms of mission success, we are doing pretty well so far, although it is costing us dearly in terms of injuries and tired soldiers. So next time we will probably train one or two more rookies, and hopefully also finish the Guerrilla Tactics School, which should make things a bit easier going forward. For today, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, then I would be very happy if you could leave a thumbs up. If you like what I'm doing and want to support me and my channel further, then go ahead and subscribe if you haven't done so already, grab some merch over on shop.peatcomplete.com, or check out and maybe even pledge to the Pete Complete Patreon. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.